Good morning. Uh, thank God for the wake up. How's everybody doing today? Um, right now, it's another overcasty day here in San Diego, but it's supposed to be clearing up. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Talking Cancer, My Journey, My Way. Um, well, where do I start off today? Well, I woke up well. Um, and everything's been going good so far. I got my, my morning uh, prayers in. I got my morning uh, inspirations. You know, uh, I put on my, my headphones and I listen to a, a um, something like a podcast. It's like a webinar kind of thing. Um where they, where the guy gives off like positive offer affirmations. Um, some of you guys might have heard of him. I don't know. His name is Panache Desai. Um, great guy. Great positive things to say. Um, always talking about light and the divine and who we are, our true self. Um, very inspirational um, for, you know, changing your, your philosophy and thinking. So that is uh, really important um, as we continue to go on and, and, and move further. And I have a trash truck right next to me. I tried to park in a more quieter space today where I didn't have a lot of traffic. So I parked and now I have the trash man <laughs> right next to me. Go figure, right? Anyways, woosa. Trying to bring you guys a better quality of audio um, because right now I'm just doing it in my car. But anyways, uh, yeah, I listen to these webinars like every morning, um, affirmations, just uh, reiterating the fact of how great we really are as, as human beings, um, the light that we were brought into, uh, the people that we were the day we were born and how we are still that person we just lose sight sometimes because of the things and the repetition that we put ourselves or other people put us through and we lose we lose sight of the light so um it kind of helps remind me not to lose sight you know, so uh, that's very important. Uh, so between my prayer, uh, when I wake up, that, uh, you know, making sure I give my kids a hug in the morning, uh, do my due diligence to make sure everybody's ready and off to go to school, um, along with the help of my wife, uh, those things make me good. Now... You know, I'm trying to get a quieter episode here, you know, so I did I did this kind of lightweight bang on my daughter because she's practicing her French in the corner. And, you know, but that's OK. You know, what I mean, like it really is. But, you know, just trying to get her to understand that, you know, I'm trying to do something as well. We do this every day and. Um, you know. Let's just have this quick 15, 20 minutes and, you know, whatever it is that it takes for me to record this and we can continue moving. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it wasn't nothing bad. It just kind of like, Hey, turn that off. So she didn't like it, of course, but most 14 year olds, excuse me, about to be 15 year olds don't like it. So, um, she's whispering, telling me to shut up. So, <laughs> but you know, I do everything, you know, I try to do everything. I'm only human. Um, but, you know, I love her. I love her to death. So, but, you know, like I said, we're in the process of raising kids and and try to produce something that will be successful at the same time with these life changes that I'm going through, hoping that she... Um, listens to some of the things that I'm going through, you know, I mean, not just from a standpoint of, oh, he has cancer, but also, don't, but also witness 
the awakening or the reawakening of my mind, my heart, my soul, my position on on God and my belief and faith in him. So, you know, with all that, and, and she's getting a, a front row seat of my everyday process um, and hopefully somewhere that that resonates. But I know that she's 14 and she wants to do her thing, too. So um, you live and learn and, you know, that's the way it is. So anyways, um, I wanted to touch back. I did hear from my doctor's office. I don't know if you listened to yesterday's episode. Um, but I've been going through this thing with my second opinion and, um, trying to get it scheduled so they could review it and, and talk to me and find out, you know, what their treatment plan is and what they see, or do they agree with the original, uh, treatment plan, uh, that my current facility is recommending. Anyways, um, I finally got a hold of them yesterday. They finally got it situated with all the different doctors. So now, like I knew already, I have to wait another two weeks, two and a half weeks for them to see me. And more than likely, they're just going to talk to me because they have all the imagery there. They have all the data. They have all the lab work notes and everything like that. So it's going to no May 11th, I have to go back um, for this. You know what I mean? Like, I tell you, they make so much money. I think it's like five, six hundred dollars a pop every visit. And the televisits, the Zoom video visits, they, they the same price. And I tell you, they, they getting us. This medical bills do this. My God. Anyways. Um, yeah, so May 11th, I have another appointment uh, to get the second opinion done. I'm actually, even though I've been having some difficulty um, dealing with them a little bit, I am still considering um, making them my official uh, doctor, like changing my primary doctor and things like that so um definitely uh something i'm thinking about and also you know just also my biggest thing right now if you haven't figured out by now is like i want to avoid treatment i really do um whether that's gonna happen or not i'm not sure like i said i feel like all of the things that i'm doing along with some of the things that they're trying to do is beneficial. I just want, I I would just like to know exactly where I stand at this particular point. I've done a lot Uh, since my diagnosis back in March of stage four. uh, I've done a lot. I think about, I think I waited about a week before I, I, initially took action on my health and trying to eradicate this cancer on my own. Um, I started off by going strict, strict on my diet, going back to my, uh, you know, eating right for my blood type. And for those that don't know about eating right for your blood type, it's it, it could be life-changing. For me, it's been life-changing. I'll tell you that. You know, because when I was on my deathbed and I couldn't eat anything, and I read this book about eating right for my blood type, it I literally, literally my body accepted practically every food that they were telling me to eat. Changed my world. Now, I'm not saying that I don't have cravings and, you know, I don't want a carne asada burrito, but what's what's better for me at this particular point? Having a carne asada burrito that I probably know does not agreeing with me because me being a type A, knowing that my digestive system don't work right, 
um, the worst digestive systems of all the blood types? Um, or do I attempt to try to live because I've been living that way all my life? You know what I mean? So why can't I just why can't I make the change to want to live because I I have a craving? You know what I mean? So food for thought. Look at your blood type. Think about it. You know what I mean? Seriously. You know. Um, secondly, uh, so I went back to that. Um, secondly, uh, I started doing some research, intense research on different things. I started doing some intense research on frequency therapy, uh, sound therapy, um, all the different places and facilities that um, you know, a lot across the world that the United States don't really acknowledge, um, out in France and Germany and things like that. Um, but you know, I had to be real with myself. I'm already in debt and I can't afford it straight up going across the world, being there for X amount of months or however long they wish to see me. I can't afford it, honestly. Um, so I said, okay, what? looked at a lot of things and, and looked at a lot of videos of survivors that have beat colorectal uh, cancer and, and metastasis and things like that. And just to let you know, the percentage of somebody with stage four metastasized colorectal cancer um, so if you're tuning in and you're new to this and you're trying to figure out or maybe you're new to cancer and don't know what metastasize means, it means that the it means that it has went to your cancer has moved to a vital organ, not or again, organ. OK, <laughs> so what does that mean? It, it's very possible that the you know, you still have it in your in your colon whatever, but the properties that were, that are within that, um, testing, cause they probably did like a biopsy, took a little piece of it, tested it, um, is now moved to, um, one of your vital organs, it's just, it's just your liver, your heart, your lungs, your brain, your bones, something like that. So it's just kind of moved on, you know what I mean? So I like to think of it like, um, I like to think of it like, okay, hey, say you were born in Pennsylvania. I mean, you had kids and they were born in Pennsylvania. Right? They moved to California. But you're still in Pennsylvania. They're still from Pennsylvania. They just happen to move to California. If that makes any sense. It's about where it originated from. That's why it's called metast metastatic colorectal cancer. This is where it's about the origin or origin of where it started. Okay, so, anyways, so I started looking at uh, different videos and people that have survived and things like that, and I came across um, a lot of uh, what's it called? Um, it's called fasting. I don't know why sometimes my brain just farts straight up. <laughs> anyway, um, fasting, a lot of success in all different types of phases of people's disease with cancer or other things that they might be going through. Fasting um, actually being a super cure-all, you know, so if you start looking at fasting, um it's been amazing for a lot of people now. Um, even the famous Dr. Dr. Sabi. Uh, what's that other guy's name? Dick Gregory. Been talking about fasting for years, but we don't listen. And lots of times it goes on deaf ears or deaf ears, deaf ears, not death, deaf ears. Um, and I went on a 21 day fast. I only I only was successful with 20. I missed it. I missed my mark. But I got very close. But within that, 
I lost a ton of weight, almost 30 pounds of weight, and, and really all of it was in my stomach. Um, but I had a lot of inflammation. I had a lot of gas. I had a lot of stuff like that, and um, actually got rid of it and felt great. But as you could imagine, doing a fast of strictly water, by 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 the way, um, my body did become a weak. And I was really pushing, pushing, pushing hard to get up, uh, go to work, maintain a high level of productivity, um, and still come home and try to keep a smile on my face um, and push through all the adversity um, of the day, you know, because, you know, my kids don't deserve the bad energy um, so I'm trying to keep the good energy my daughter's stomach just growled like crazy and she just had a big breakfast my bad that was a sidebar <laughs> I'm sorry but I keep it real real raw on here okay and I'm not talking about like speaking explicitly like crazy motherfuck this motherfuck that. I'm just talking about just you know I'm I'm in my element, you know at this point. So, like I said, when I started on March 6, uh, that's how I started. Uh, when I came off the fast, um, my body didn't take well to the juicing that I was make I was I was asking for, um. So I went in, I had to figure something out and, and found out that the juicing was actually causing a lot of gas, um, so on and so forth. And, um, I reevaluated things and actually, you know, had to figure out what was causing this gas. And it was the greens, vegetables, juicing that was causing it because I couldn't just introduce food off the top, you know, after a 20 day fast, you know what I mean? So... Um, but I was trying to figure something out and I was, like I said, I had a lot of stomach, stomach pains, you know, within my stomach, my sternum. And it was just, um, I don't know. It was just really painful. So I ended up getting some acupuncture, meditating, things like they just really getting myself in the zone, a lot more praying, a lot more, uh, becoming one with myself, um, and, and loving myself and who I am and, and, Affirming that I am uh, my own healer with the help of God, you know. So um, all these things that I've done have led to um, where I'm at and with these doctors. So coming back full full circle back to the doctors, um, I really, really, truly feel that. I'm bringing you live and direct my self-healing because God has gave me that opportunity to do so. God gave me all the properties and, and belief that I need to self-heal myself by listening to my body, being open to listening and understanding other people's journeys and implementing what was comfortable for me, what my body was willing to accept. You got that? I needed to know more and I went out and found out more on my own. No doctors, no input from anybody just me and my wife researching, my sister as well, um, and a couple other people in my family, my aunt, um, very knowledgeable um, in certain areas, and, you know, directed me, helped direct me to certain things that, you know, I wasn't able to either find or it was just overwhelming amount of information. I just couldn't go over everything. So, you know, you definitely have to, you know, weed things out, what's worked for you, what you've already tried, so on and so forth. Um, 
But now when I get back to these doctors, I want to know with their testing where I stand. I feel like I'm in the, I'm in the middle of curing myself. There's so many um, survivor stories of just, and it all starts with God and their mentality to not be defeated. The strength of the human body and the human mind in conjunction with the food God is feeding your soul is tremendous. So uh, take heed to what your body is telling you and return back to your natural state of light that you were born with. Realize who you are. Realize that you don't need affirmations and likes um, through social media to be who you are. Those are going to come no matter what. If you are in love and in like with yourself, in love and in like with your light, in love and in like with God, and everything else will come. Because you don't need it from anybody else but yourself to know your worth. So, um, like I said, this stuff that I, I come to you with is completely unscripted. Um... All I do is just breathe, pray, and press record. I don't edit nothing. Straight to you, raw. Telling my truth. Sometimes, you know, a lot of things are intertwined with the episode before, the ep- two, three episodes prior, but it's just the way it goes because this is just the story and how it unfolds. I don't sit here and just have topics. Oh, I'm going to talk about what you call it next week and have this whole treatment thing lined up. This is straight, raw, uncut, where I'm at, what I'm feeling in the moment. So, um, with that being said, if you listen to the whole episode so far, um, I do want to talk about some things that I'm working on um, because at the end of the day, it's not just about my journey. It's about your journey too. And I am wanting to, I've already reached out to a few people that I know that have helped me along the way. Uh, but I also want to reach out to you, the people listening that I don't know, that have a story of a their own or of a family member or maybe your spouse or something. You know, you have a story too and your feelings matter. And I would like to invite you onto my show so you could tell your story. If you're interested in talking, please just leave me an email. Uh, you could reach me at cancer, my journey, my way at gmail.com. Um, again, if you would like to be on the show and tell your story, um, this is not an interview process. So I don't want to interview you, really. I mean, we could talk and chop it up, but really, I just want you to tell whatever you need to be said, whatever needs to be said, whether you're a survivor, whether you're going through it right now, whether you just found out uh, where your emotions are. If you're if you're able to dig into your true feelings and emotions about what you're going through or what you've been through, please email me, cancer, my journey, my way at gmail.com. Let me know. And we will definitely start working you into the schedule. Okay, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, This is totally not funded by anything. This is all me, just raw. Um, But I do have bills that are piling up. And if you feel inclined to help me out with some of that stuff, I do have a GoFundMe page. You can find me at My uh, uh, Cancer, My Journey, My Way. Um, I am there. Search by my email. My name is Luis Lopez as well. 
um, the title of the GoFundMe, I believe it's like billing, bills keep piling up or something like that. Um, but anyways, any contribution helps uh, for nothing else but the bills. The bills are piling, credit cards are piling, paying this one off to pay that one off. And Anyways, you know, but I just, like I said, uh, just listening to me and the podcast is beneficial enough. But if you so happen to feel inclined or listen to my story, you could also find my my page, uh, like on Facebook or something like that. It's, it's called Cancer, My Journey, My Way. Um, it's all there. It's all in line. And you can find me on all your major platforms right now. Um, except YouTube. I'm still working on that. But you can find me on Spotify. You can find me on... You can find this podcast on Spotify, Apple, uh, Pandora, iHeartRadio, um, Google Podcasts, and YouTube coming soon. So, um, yeah, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. God bless. Thank God for the wake up. Um, and thank God for you. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate your support. Again, thank you. Peace, love, one.